They're not gonna attack. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to some more Historic Brawl gameplay. Yes, we are continuing our quest to learn Historic Brawl. Uh, as we do that, or before we jump into that, I should say, uh, we do have a giveaway going on right now for an Innistrad uh, Midnight Hunt bundle. If you would like to enter to win that, all you got to do is subscribe here on YouTube. We do have four other places you can also subscribe. Doing so on all of those platforms, those platforms being YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, Discord, and Twitter, I had to remember, uh, doing so on all five platforms gives you the best possible chance to win, uh, and that is just free to enter. There's there's nothing else you have to do, it's just following us there. So if you would like a chance to win, uh, please feel free to do so. Any one of those platforms is uh, a valid entry, by the way, but all five is gonna be obviously the best. So. Uh, additionally, if you're not already, please make sure you subscribe just because you enjoy the videos. Make sure you like the videos because that really does mean a lot to us. But we're jumping into Sithis today. Uh, this is a very popular deck, very uh, enchantment heavy deck. Obviously, whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain one life and you draw a card. There's a lot of that style mechanic here. Uh, we'll see uh, things like Satessin Champion, put a 1-1 counter and draw a card. Uh, just a lot of different stuff that all basically revolves around us playing tons and tons of enchantments. Uh, we've got some really big payoff things like Felidar Retreat, of course. Uh, Nyx Bloom Ancient to essentially triple our mana, which is kind of ridiculous. And then things like Sandworm Convergence at the top here. Mirari's Wake to double our mana. Just lots of really good stuff uh, with a lot of really small enchantments that all kind of lead into much stronger things. Oh, excuse me, Core Spirit Dancer draw in here. Uh, lots of different stuff. I haven't tested this deck yet. I have no idea what it's going to do, but I've seen it a good bit, uh, and it does seem to do fairly well. I should mention this is not my own creation. I have still been in the, 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 the mindset that pulling lists and just giving stuff a shot first, uh, before I really learn the format seems like the best thing to do. This is based off of arena uh, replays list uh, so please keep that in mind I didn't create it arena replay did you can watch his video uh, his or her video I don't know actually uh, over on their channel so please do check them out but uh, yeah it's a very interesting very straightforward list we're gonna play a lot of stuff hopefully gain a lot of value off of enchantments and see how it goes uh, I like that Sithis is super cheap uh, because you can get it out early and then hopefully kind of cycle through very early as well so let's jump in guys we're gonna do this for 20 30 minutes Let's hopefully get a handful of games in and then we'll kind of wrap up and talk about the deck at the very end but let's go ahead and jump into game one all right guys here we are for game number one this is a mirror match so i'm very curious to see how this actually goes uh but this is a fairly easy keep <coughs> excuse me uh still getting over my little sickness by the way so if i i cough here and there i do apologize but uh, yeah, I mean, this is a pretty easy keep. Uh, we've got double, obviously, the two color lands that we need. We can get Sithis down early and then start playing a number of other things to uh, to kind of draw into hopefully more and more power. Uh, obviously, the opponent's going to be on a very similar game plan, so we'll see how this actually goes. Um, very interested to see, actually. Uh, but they are on the play, which does mean they probably have a bit more of an advantage in this matchup. Ooh, and Leyline of Abundance is very good as well. Uh, so hopefully we can make something happen. Let's get a Plains out there. Uh, next turn, I think we'll probably just go for Sithis right away. Uh, we'll see what the opponent obviously wants to do, but chances are they're going to do something very similar. Sure. Sithis really is the engine card that we need to, to keep this going. Uh, and so we do want to make sure we're getting this down as quickly as we can so we can then take advantage of it. So they obviously have a better start than we do, no doubt about it. Uh, we do have a Banishing Light, though, which is interesting. We might be able to uh, take advantage of that uh, here at some point. Oh, OK. Sterling Grove is very good. Uh, we might just need to get rid of that uh, as an option. So let's see what we want to do. Um, 
don't really have to worry about planeswalkers here to be honest so i am going to go ahead and use this uh and while they can't actually do anything about this, I'm gonna go ahead and throw that out there. That gets Shroud off the field. If you don't know what Shroud does, it just means that other enchantments can't be the target of spells or abilities, period. It's not hexproof where the, like, you can target your own things, but your opponent can't. It literally is, you can't touch it. Uh, nobody can touch it. So very, very strong uh, and very glad to, to get that off the field. This is a very good uh, card, by the way. To, to get rid of some stuff here. Target player sacrifices an enchantment. Uh, interesting. Let's see. Uh, we don't control that, so that doesn't actually work the way you'd like it to. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's do this. Uh, this is going to still allow us to draw some cards here. Obviously, they uh, do gain some, some life there, but that's fine. Dromoka's command is actually quite good because we can get them to sacrifice something hopefully kind of useful. I mean, any of these would be okay. Leyline is obviously not that exciting. I guess we should have attacked there, but we'll block with it at some point, I imagine. Um, all right. So they're probably, yeah, they're just going to take out, I assume, the Banishing Light here. Uh, it does have to be, I guess, the Banishing Light. We actually have the Elspeth Conqueror's Death back, though, if we'd like it. <laughs> excuse me uh but very interested to see how this actually plays out because they don't have anything in their graveyard uh it does keep us from playing a lot of stuff on our upcoming or the the following turn here so we'll see how this actually goes a green source would be great because we can get zendikar's royal down uh that does seem quite good uh we could also just dromoka's command and then see what happens there's archon uh archon's very good here for sure uh, let's see. Hmm. We're missing a land drop is the only problem here. Uh. I think we're actually going to do this. So that's going to draw us a card. That does get us another land here, which is quite good. Um. Let's go to attacks first. I can safely attack with these two. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, all right. Um, let's do this now. Uh, let's say target player sacrifices an enchantment. Uh, actually, no. I should have should have done that differently. That's on me. Um, and Dramoka's command is going to cost more here. What I should have done is made them sack the enchantment and then put a counter on Transcendent Envoy or Saram. Uh, so that was a mistake on my end. I forget you get to choose two, not just one, uh, but that's okay. That was just a misplay on my end. So next turn, if we draw a land, we can go Archon Eidolon uh, if we would like, which doesn't seem that bad, actually. Um, we did not draw a land. Okay. So what do we do? Uh, all of these have Shroud except for that. Um... All right, we're gonna attack in first. They do have a couple of mana left open, so I'm not gonna attack with the Saram. Uh, although we do have Dramoka's Command open as well, so we could potentially get through it, but this is definitely a big hit. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, uh, and then I think we're just gonna play Archon here. Uh, a little underwhelming turn to be fair, but this really gets our Air Assault kind of working for us here uh, and I don't know that they can do a ton. They can't actually target things with this, uh, which is kind of interesting. Because if they sacrifice it, but then they can't target anything since they all have Shroud. <laughs> so that seems a little anti-combo-y, anti, uh, but that's fine. But now we've got two very real threats that they have to deal with. I would venture to say the Archon is more deadly, uh, but, you know, we'll see. Uh... Okay. Well, obviously, Hexproof from blue and black. So really, this is just a draw spell at this point. Um, does this have reach? No. So I'm just going to do this and draw a card. Uh, or not draw a card, excuse me. I did not do that correctly. Uh, all right, that's fine. Um, this does have Shroud, so we can't deal with that. 
<clears throat> um, let's see. I'm gonna do this. So target player sacrifices and Tremoka's command. Target a player, so we're gonna target them. And we're gonna throw a counter here. Uh, this does have lifelink, so I actually do want to power this up more than anything else. Um, curious to see if they can actually... I don't think they can do anything here. This, I believe... Okay, so they can target the uh, Alciad. That's fair. Um, then we'll do this, which is an enchantment, so this is going to trigger Archon. Uh, they do gain some life, of course, but now we have a protection spell here. Uh, which is obviously quite helpful. This upcoming turn, though, is going to be quite scary. Um, so I'm very interested to see how this goes, but this does set us up quite well to be able to protect something. Uh, so if they do have a Banishing Light or anything like that, we can just Alciad, give it Pro White, and hopefully be okay. Uh, but they've got so much mana with Nyx Bloom Ancient here, it's very curious. This is a very interesting game, actually. Uh, the the Sterling Grove is a very problematic card. We could have Elspeth conquered Death on the Nyx Bloom Ancient had that not been there, uh, which would have been very, very good. But it is what it is. We can't get around it, so. Okay. Uh... So we're going to do this and give it pro white, uh, which just forces them to get rid of that. Now, they could very easily have plenty of other stuff, so we'll see. Oh, nice. Okay. That's fine. It's not good for us, but... It is what it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, all right. Yeah. Felidar Retreat, very, very good. Uh, this is the trick. With the Next Bloom Ancient on the field, they've got so much mana, and then for every enchantment they actually produce, they just get to throw you know more stuff at us. So this is actually very, very good because they draw a card every time. They get to replay the stuff. Like They just have whatever they need here. Um, so very, very solid play here by the opponent. I think they're probably likely to win, um, just based on the value that they're producing and the value we are not producing. Um, they also haven't really dealt us damage though. So there is that, uh, we'll decline. We're not going to do that. Um, all right. So we have options. We can Elspeth conquers death, the Calyx, which I do think is probably correct. Um, Yeah, I think we just kind of have to do that. This is a very problematic card, period. So we do, do need to need to get that off of the field here. Uh, alternatively, we I guess we could have just played Eidolon to kind of stem the bleeding, but they've got so much mana, it really doesn't matter. Um, they gain two, uh, life, excuse me, uh, but we get Calyx out of there. Uh, we'll play the Colony Garden. This actually gains them a life, which isn't necessarily good, but... We do need all the land we can get here, so got to go for it. Uh, yep. <sighs> Going to attack in, gain some life, and see what happens. I mean, worth noting, they don't have a giant threat on the field. Other than, I mean, Felidar Retreat over time, 100%. Very, very problematic for us, but at the moment, oh, very good. All right, they definitely neutered our threat now. Uh, so chances are, I think we're gonna be in a bad spot, uh, but it is what it is. Really, Elspeth Conquers Death, that second one doesn't do too much, but they're gonna kill it anyway, it looks like. Uh, that's fine. It really didn't do too much against them, so I'm a little surprised they even worried about it. Resolve, decline. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, that's very interesting uh, and definitely worth throwing out there. Let's do it. Let's throw this out there. Cast an aura equipment or vehicle spell. So none of these are auras, equipments, or any of that at this point. Um, sure. I think we just throw Zendikar's Royal out there. The trick with Saram is it's not every enchantment that draws us a card, uh, whereas this obviously is. <coughs> I'm going to attack with our... <laughs> uh, they're not going to block, obviously. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
I guess we could have attacked with these two. That was a bit of a mistake. Uh, we do need to chip away at them, so would have been helpful. Uh, resolve. Uh, we'll decline. Again, I just don't think it's really going to matter. Um, let's attack in. Uh, we did miss four damage there, which is a substantial chunk when you're looking at this kind of deal. <coughs> uh, we do have the Crawling Barons as well which is worth just kind of stacking up some counters on. We can just kind of try to win the game that way. Uh, I This is where I need to get more into the commander state of mind, which is to, to think about that kind of stuff, because I don't always, uh, obviously. All right. <clears throat> um, I don't know that we actually play that. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I guess we do. <clears throat> The, so the thing to think about is for everything we play, they gain life. Uh, let's do this. I'm just going to throw the counters on here. Uh, we'll decline. Don't actually want it to be a creature yet. Uh, because then they can deal with it. That's very good for them. Field of Ruin is... Or Field of the Dead, excuse me. This is a, a very good game. I've definitely misplayed a good bit here. Um, no doubt about it. But we're... We're moving forward, at least. Um, uh, resolve, decline. Okay, so we can fight something off here, uh, which is interesting. Uh, the question is, do we actually want to? Uh, actually, yeah. Uh, okay, let's do this correctly, though. Let's do this. We actually want this to fight this. We want to kill this so we can get it back. Um, the trick is we don't actually necessarily want to play it right away because they could just have some stuff to kill it. I don't know. We'll see. Sure. All right. Kill off our own thing. Uh, take action. That gives us a squirrel token. Um, I'm actually going to decline. Uh, because this does cost me like a lot more mana now, I think I will go ahead and play it. <coughs> Excuse me. Man, the, uh, the authority of the consoles, man. Really doing wonders for them. I mean, we're continuing to play creatures when maybe we shouldn't necessarily, but Sithis is definitely one we need down. Uh, it just adds value to most of our draws, if not all of them. Uh, and so we, at this point, if we draw a land, we get a 2-2. Uh, if we draw an enchantment, we get to throw it out with Sithis and hopefully draw into more. Uh, and then if it's, if it's actually an equipment or anything like that, it's even better. But, oh man, uh, we'll decline. That's not super ideal, uh, to be honest. It's good because, again, anytime we do cast an aura, we're just going to draw a bunch of stuff. So, like, we can do some stuff with it. But at the moment, we're not doing too great. Um, they also just have a butt ton of 3-3s three now, um, which is scary. Sure. So we'll play out the Core Spirit Dancer. We're going to leave the Crawling Barons uh, for the time being. Uh, we may need it to block. Uh, and so I'm going to hold off on that for the moment. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I sound terrible. I'm so sorry, guys. You're having to listen to this. Uh, all right. That's very annoying because it is a... Oh, man. Because it is a flyer. Yep. They just have so much mana. I mean, look at all this. I mean, that is insane. Yeah. <clears throat> Stop. Stop. They can do this like endlessly. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Um, I don't think we can really do this, but we're going to try. All right. Yeah, I th I mean, we let them attack, I think. Like, it's cool. So I guess we let them do it. Um, yep. They're not going to attack. 
Oh, we should have done the... Whoops. That's not helpful. Like, at all. All right, I'm going to go ahead and concede, guys. <laughs> They've got way too much on the field that we just can't deal with. Uh, and we're <clears throat> not drawing super well. So, let's go ahead, guys. Let's jump into game two. All right, guys. Here we are for game number two. And, uh, yeah, I actually really like this hand. We've got the Squirrel Sanctuary with uh, Sithis on turn two. That seems pretty good. Nyx Herald, all this good stuff, so absolutely. We are against Chandra, Torch of Defiance, so I am very heavily assuming that we're going to run into quite a lot of burn, uh, which is fine. Uh, yeah, that's very good. Um, hopefully Sithis can stick for just a little bit, because if it can, uh, that means we, we can gain a little bit of life here. Maybe offset some of the burn that we expect to see. Um, very curious to see if they just go for the Sithis right off the bat. Yeah, looks like that's the case. Uh, yeah, take that action. Unfortunately, don't have the mana there, but that's okay. We did not draw a land. I mean, we do have this, uh, so I guess we just play that out. And we'll go ahead and play uh, Nessian Wanderer here and then get an attack in. So the only trick with Sithis, it's not a very strong card. <laughs> uh, so we do find ourselves kind of losing out a lot to just more powerful things, uh, which is okay, it happens. We'll try for it. Uh, this does get us a little bit of value here, so let's pull this. That's an untapped land versus the tapped land that we would have gotten otherwise, and I do kind of want to get as much of that up as possible. There's Chandra, Awakened Inferno. Just going to clear the board. Uh, fair enough. Yeah, that's pretty good. Unfortunately, no mana there. All right. That's not super helpful. Um, yeah, let's do this. We have the Snakeskin Veil to give it Hexproof as well. So let's hope that they target it. <laughs> uh, and then we can just kind of get them. Uh, but we'll see. We also do have Squirrel Sanctuary up if we need to uh, to get a little squirrel action out of this. All right, there she is. Double Chandra. Uh, very scary place to be, but it is what it is. Let's see what we can do. Sure. <clears throat> Only positive here is they may just burn out of spells. I mean, that is a possibility. Uh, and so we do have some options here, hopefully. Sure. All right. Yep. Obviously going to need to offset that damage somehow here. Uh, there are a couple ways we can do that. Um, let's see. Let's do this. Uh, and let's attack in here. What do we want to attack? Uh, I think it's this. Let's see if they decide to block. It looks like no, so let's gain some life. And then again, we just get to leave up the uh, the snakeskin veil here, uh, which I think is worth it. I don't want to just play Sithis again into more burn. There's burn on the field that can deal with Sithis, so like I think we need to deal with what's on the field well before we're going to be able to do anything else. <coughs> Excuse me. Interesting. Uh, resolve that. Let's do this. So not only does it get a 1-1 one, one counter, so it's now a much more potent threat, uh, but they can't target it this turn, so they wasted their mana on that, uh, which is great. Now they do have an attack in here with the Bone Crusher Giant if they'd like it. <clears throat> Uh, but they may not want to. Looks like they don't. All right, taking some damage. Sure. Uh, as long as this creature... Very nice. Uh, well, I like that. So this just means we don't actually have to... have to, like, trigger this. So that's essentially the same as doing that. That's very good. Uh, yep. Um, I think we want to do this uh, to give it trample. 
so it can power through a little bit here. Uh, oh, good, and we won. We did it. Yay. All right, we got there, guys. Let's do one more. I know we're kind of pushing time here. That first game took a little while, but let's go ahead. Let's jump into game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Uh, and yeah, this is a keep. Um, it's not an amazing hand, but we can actually start with the colony territory, maybe. Uh, and then, uh, but Castle Ardenvale is going to come into play tapped. That's not ideal. So I guess we need to do that first. Uh, so that way we can play Sithis on turn two. Now, this is mono black, fully expecting that they've got plenty to kill. Um, but Veil of Summer might actually be quite helpful here. Uh, hmm. Maybe let's do this. Let's play this semi smart here if we can. I'm assuming they're going to just kill this Eidolon uh, at some point. Um, they might be wondering why we didn't play. Ooh, Death Touch. Okay. Uh, that's really good. Um, we'll play Sithis. And I think here we will play this. Uh, we shouldn't attack because this does have Death Touch. And while we do have First Strike, that's not good enough. Uh, one thing also I did... Oh, uh, mean. <clears throat> that's rude. Uh, yeah. You just got me on that one. Um... One thing, by the way, I was going to mention on the last historic uh, brawl video that I posted, uh, I noticed somebody mentioned that they ran up against um, Golos like more often than not, uh, which I thought was interesting because I've only actually seen one Golos deck in my, I'll say, two weeks of playing historic brawl, uh, roughly two weeks. And I find that really interesting because they were like really pissed off about it. And I get it. Like if you if you happen to be up against a Golos deck every time, totally understand. Like that would be very frustrating. I I I get that. Um, I just hadn't had that same experience, not even close to it. So I was a little, I'll just say taken aback because I just didn't realize that that was such an issue. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. I, this is no criticism by any means. Um, I just found that very interesting because I did not see that coming um, <coughs> or didn't didn't anticipate somebody saying that just because I haven't had anything close to that similar experience. So um, maybe that's just me. I don't know. I think we're actually going to do this. Uh, yeah, I think that that was worth it, ish. We have hexproof from black, um, but I don't think that's pro black, so I'm gonna say no blocks here. I'd like to get an attack in here on this if we can. Sure. Oh, let's see. Uh, yeah. So let's do this. That's very annoying. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's attack and kill Obnixilis. Get that out of there, because otherwise that's going to be a really annoying problem. Um, cool. And then we'll play Saram. Now we get to leave up Karametra's Blessing here, uh, which is something. It's not great, but it's something. Target player discards two cards. Okay. Uh, I think it's Sandworm Convergence. And probably Nyx Herald. Uh, maybe it's Cartouche of Strength. No, I think it's Nyx Herald. Cartouche is a kill spell for this Aerialist, which I think is probably worth it. We also have Face of Divinity, which is just very, very good uh, to gain us some life back into this game. Uh, we will need it. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Uh, yeah, just going to have to take it. Um, ugh, hopefully we don't die. <laughs> All right. Oh, Marari's Wake is quite good. Uh, let's do this. So this draws us a card, which is obviously quite good. We, they may have a kill spell here. Uh, and then we just do this. Uh, yeah, that's very solid. Um, so that's going to give us a lifelink. 
I think we leave Saram for now, just in case we have to block this. Uh, do we like Temple? Yeah, I mean, I kind of think we do. Um, I mean, I think that's useful for sure. Now, they might be able to kill the Moondancer now, uh, which would be very good, but they are slowly at least running out of uh, options here. They've only got a few cards left in hand. And they're not drawing lands. That's the key, is we know they're not drawing lands, because otherwise they would have played them. Uh, taking a big hit. Which sucks, but... Please don't kill Moondancer. No, 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 no. Uh, that was going to be really important to keep around. Um, all right. We need land, so I'm going to keep it. Uh, hmm. I don't know what the best option is here. Uh, I think chances are we're probably just going to die. <laughs> um, but I think we kind of have to cartouche here. I guess we should have put that on the bottom. Uh, let's fight this off. Yep. Uh, that doesn't really do anything, but let's cycle it away. I mean, we're just dead, right? Yeah, uh, we're, we're pretty out there. Uh, yeah. Three. Yep, we're dead. All right. Uh, well, we'll go ahead and concede here. They got us for sure. Uh, but let's, uh, let's chat about this list. All right. Uh, so Sithis, what do we think? Uh, Sithis is a very cool deck when it gets going. Unfortunately, we didn't really get to see it do its thing. We obviously did get a win, uh, which is quite nice, but it really wasn't on the back of Sithis so much as just some good cards that we had on the field and the opponent kind of burnt out. Um, which is to be expected from a red deck. Uh, the, the trick... I will say the trick with Sithis, and I think I didn't e execute this very well at all, uh, is to to be able to protect Sithis right after you play Sithis, because uh, if you can land a turn with it on the field, uh, and you have just one or two plays, you're gaining a lot of value. Uh, whereas if you play it, it dies. You play it again, it dies. Like we saw in uh, that that Chandra match, uh, and even you know here we saw it die. Um, it's not that great. It, it's very easy, I will say, to deal with, uh, which is the problem. Now, that being said, that comes with a very high upside if you can land it. Uh, so I think the trick is just knowing when and how to play Sithis. I did not play very well, uh, I don't think. I think I could have done a lot of things differently and potentially better to have maybe pushed out an extra win. Uh, I think in certain circumstances, we were just kind of not going to win it, period. Uh, I think in, in particular with this mono black list that we were up against Obnixilis, don't really think we had a likelihood of winning. Uh, all that to say, though, um, maybe we could have done something differently, maybe not attacked with the Moon Dancer, but I think that would have put us in a worse spot because they did have a kill spell. So I don't know. I, I like Sithis. I think there's some work to be done with this list uh, that maybe learning of the list could have really helped a lot more, obviously. Uh, but regardless, it was still really fun. I enjoyed it a lot, guys. I hope you guys did. It was really, really fun. It's great to have some uh, some new formats under the under the table here. I like doing some different stuff. Uh, tomorrow, we are hopefully going to have the mystery uh, crate opening part two. We're also going to announce that giveaway. We do have the channel giveaway going on right now, so please do subscribe to enter for that uh, and check out some more historic brawl videos we've got tons of them up not tons we've got a handful of them up now here on the channel but regardless guys thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it leave a like if you enjoyed it and i will see you very soon for some more gameplay videos